Anarchists United by Alexis Uriel Published July 17, 2014 in The New Leveler, a publication by Students for a Stateless Society, a student organization of Center for a Stateless Society. Lately, I've been thinking about how the diverse anarchist strategies could combine against our current class society. How every variation on the theme of Assert Your Freedom Now, from the anarcho-syndicalist direct action to Sam Conkin's agorism, could combine in order to make the existing order ever less interesting and more impracticable. How we might eliminate political, economic, and social privileges while also promoting mutual aid among human beings. It might look a little complicated to reconcile the specific goals of anarcho-syndicalists, collectivist anarchists, anarcho-communists, and individualist anarchists, especially with those last two. However, I believe there's more common ground than conflict between these schools, and the institutions they wish to develop can be complementary to one another. I will seek to outline here how anarchists can form a coherent coalition to overthrow the current status capitalist system. I will begin with the institutions proposed by individualist anarchists in the mutualist tradition, since they are the ones I am most intimately familiar with. The central idea of mutualism is to establish the control of the productive process by workers through the widespread dispersion of capital in society. Perdon held that every individual should own a means of production, individually or collectively with others by contract, and Kevin Carson outlined in Homebrew Industrial Revolution some of the ways in which current desktop production technologies and hobby material can help accomplish this ideal. It's not hard to imagine how the current monopoly capitalism, increasingly bureaucratic, hierarchical, and centralized, relying on state intervention to keep competitors out of the market, creates serious incentives for people to look for more and more ways to get out of the crushing routine of wage slavery. A brief, a brief investigation of the lifestyles of the average metropolitan inhabitant will show people want something more. Thus one can imagine that more and more people will seek to acquire some personal means of production. In the beginning, this may be individualist anarchists commit, committed to the cause, but then others without any ideological affiliation will follow, only seeking more independence. Technologies such as personal computer, 3D printers, and CNC tools, which are becoming increasingly more accessible, can help a lot but a good old garden in any piece of land one can get is enough to begin with. These independent workers will initially produce to the general market, for sure, but the general market is subject to government taxation, a spoilation of the work just as much as a monopolist profit, and it is in the interest of these revolutionaries to subvert this state of affairs. An ingenious recent crypto-anarchist contribution, virtual cryptocurrencies, can come to their aid in this regard. These independent producers can form mutual aid and commerce networks, exchanging their products through Bitcoin or any other currency, who knows, maybe labor bitnote, that are resistant to regulation. As long as all transactions may be made inside the network and with virtual currencies, it is impossible to track them, regulate them, or even tax them. Such a network of independent producers establishes yet another incentive bringing more producers into the network. The more products and services can be offered inside the network, the less dependent on state-dominated formal economy, in kind of terms, the white and pink markets, producers are. How to do this? Once again, mutualist ideas come to our aid. The establishment of a mutual bank, as proposed by Perdone and William Green, which lends capital with almost zero interest, or at least infinitely smaller than those of the current bank cartel, through virtual currencies. Such a bank would be able to finance the acquisition of means of production by an even greater share of the population disgruntled with the current economic system. With the growth of the producer's network and the mutual trust relations promoted by the mutual bank, a truly revolutionary potential is unleashed. Increasingly, more complex production processes can be organized through cooperatives, P2P projects, and other kinds of collaboration. This makes the network more and more independent from the state-dominated formal economy we live under today. As this network gets stronger and more resilient, more goods may be created inside of it, such as schools, aid to people in hardship, medical treatment, and collective transportation. So far, I have described a way to begin a, with a parallel economy inside the current economy, as defended by mutualists and agorists. 
Let's now add a little spice from the other anarchist schools. Anarcho-syndicalists defend the establishment of a workers' democratic self-managed workplace to be achieved through direct action and solidarity among the working classes. We can see clearly how the independent producers network described above would have a huge space for the establishment of trade unions and decentralized federations through cooperatives. But let's examine the possibility of, for trade unions in the formal economy, bringing the current corporations to workers' control of production. Following the Wobblies' direct action tactics of their classic pamphlet, How to Fire Your Boss, workers in the most diverse industries can use direct and decentralized organizations to gain huge bargaining power in the face of these industries' management. The greater such bargaining power, the closer the democratic self-management ideal they are. The constant disruptions in these industries' productivity will systematically hurt the capitalist profit, and if they are sufficiently unpredictable and concerted, they will have little effect on workers, even taking into consideration the probable state intervention on behalf of the capitalist by the police. An effect of this disruption in production and the consequent decrease in the market value of the company may be the gradual takeover, by workers individually or as a collective, of the involved company's shares in stock exchanges. Such a stock purchase would provide more and more control over the workplace and could be funded through the mutual banks described above. Once a certain workplace had completely come under workers' direct self-management, it, its products can be exchanged inside the network of independent producers on a mutual basis. This would greatly add to the stability and to the welfare of all inside the network, since a large quantity of people are now connected. We can see now that mutualists and anarcho-syndicalists can work together against the state and capitalism, achieving not only goals they share, but also their more specific aims. Let's try to expand this to include some more anarchist schools. Collectivist Anarchism heavily connected with the ideas of Mikhail Bakunin, defends a form of social organization much like a society organized around the trade unions described above. If these unions adopted a wage policy, or more properly speaking, a division of production, based on the quantity of labor performed by each of its members, possibly through the labor bit notes accepted by the whole network of independent producers, it would be simple to organize collectivist anarchist communes. I imagine that such communes with the centralized societies located around the unionized industries with the relevant social organizations being all of collective nature. Several of these communes, also connected to the market through the network of independent producers, could coordinate to supply their members with products and services that were not available locally. Another possible organization for these communes would be around the principles of anarcho-communism, whose main theorist, Peter Kropotkin, defended the end of wages and of division of the products of labor according to the individual necessities instead of the quantity of labor. For this, it would suffice that unions abolished payments and the use of any currency and that communal distribution systems were created. In the economic sense, the anarcho-communist societies would be outside the network of independent producers since there would be no exchanges even in cryptocurrencies, but certainly they would be connected by ties of trust and mutual aid. For example, the network could supply products and services for free through those members that so wished. Other models for integrating anarchist institutions and communities, similar to those just described, can be developed in order to harmonize with the specific interests of green anarchists, anarcho-naturalists, and who knows, maybe even anarcho-primitivists. In conclusion, I would like to include one last thought from a classical liberal with serious anarchist tendencies, Gustave de Molinari. As this intricate network of producers and independent communities were simultaneously developed by anarchist direct actions, it would ever more be at the capitalist state's gunpoint and at odds with its armed forces. The 20th century has shown us what states are capable of when promoting horror and violence. It's not hard to imagine that this revolutionary network would need protection. Molinari proposed that the services of protections and conflict resolution be provided by independent producers and not by a monopolist institution like the state. Surely, our network of independent producers could include people interested in providing these services, 
Also, several kinds of decentralized and community organizations of protections and conflict resolution could emerge in the collectivist, anarchist, and anarcho-communist communes. This collaboration between the communes and the market of independent producers would create a powerful bulwark against the lethal dangers of the state. In conclusion, my central point here was that anarchists from every school can unite into a coherent coalition. Through concrete actions derived from their own traditions, they can advance their both their common causes of overthrowing status capitalist domination and their specific causes in the most genuine spirit of mutual aid. I myself am preparing a sustainable community project and mining some bitcoins. I look forward to collaborating with you all. This has been Anarchist United by Uriel Alexis, published July 17, 2014 in the New Leveler, a publication of Students for a Stateless Society an or student organization of Center for a Stateless Society. You've been listening to Feed 44, a project of C4SS.org, otherwise known as the Center for a Stateless Society. Learn more at C4SS.org. <laughs>